How are you doing today? Hi, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Looking forward to chatting with you. Um, so I guess what I'll do is I'll start right at the beginning. Um, before you came on, were you familiar with the MCU and with Loki and all of that stuff in particular? I was aware and I suppose familiar, but I wouldn't say I was by any means an expert. I <laughs> had seen some of the films, but not all of them. Um, and I was aware of Tom's character. Um, so how did you find coming into a show that doesn't just have an existing character, but is built on like the idea of keeping the timeline, keeping the canon in check? How did you find sort of dealing, dealing with all that exposition? Yeah, I mean, initially it was quite quite a lot to get your head around. You know, I had um, a great conversation with Kate Heron, our, our director, and she was explaining everything about the timekeepers and the sacred timeline and the time variance authority. And, I, and it was sort of mind blowing, you know, because it's all sort of world building of an aspect of the MCU that we haven't even really seen on screen before. So, so it was a lot to get my head around. But then once I read the scripts and I saw the sets and we got into doing some rehearsals and, and some stunt training and everything it all started to fit together uh, and you talk about you know talking with Kate and stuff going back then what was the initial pitch that you got when you sort of found out more about the project what we what was this this so story and then this character sold us yeah I mean it was very much um sold to me as sort of you know a darker sort of um deep dive into this anti-hero, you know, everybody's favorite villain, really, Loki. And and um, and for me, my character as a judge in the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, uh, was very much pitched to me as um, this authoritative character who's kind of a boss and runs, uh, you know, this this area of, of the TVA and that she's powerful and strong and, um, and has, you know, a lot of authority over Loki. So I thought that could be quite fun. Uh, you have power over Loki and also some of the relationships and the conversations with uh, Owen Wilson's Mobius are also really interesting. I like your character, how it's like a bureaucratic power. It's not like, you know, superpowers. Where did you look to to kind of convey that? Because that's a very different sort of power to what we normally see in these sort of shows and movies. Yeah, it was really interesting. I think a lot of it was in the script and the dynamic with Mobius. Uh, Owen Wilson's character as being a long-standing friendship, but she is technically superior to him. So, <laughs> so that was kind of fun, I think, because you know Owen has so much sort of um, wit and sort of comedic talent, and um, you know with improv as well. So to be able to play with that dynamic was was really really cool. Um, and obviously, this character has a very large comic book history. At least the um, the, the name does. Uh, did you look into that at all? Because so far, there's very little relationship between the two. Yes, I, I, I read a little bit about, you know, Renslayer in the comics, but, you know, initially the, uh, the producers and, and Kate did let me know that this sort of section that we're in with the TVA is sort of more of an origin story for her. So in a way that sort of let me off the hook of having to sort of know everything that comes next because we're sort of starting pre the comics. So that was kind of exciting as well um, to be able to feel a sense of ownership over her. Uh, and then, you know, speaking of ownership, one thing talking to uh, some of the other actors on the show today has been the costumes and the way that they sort of built the character around that. Could you talk about deciding the look? Because it's a very sort of stripped down look like a lot of the TVA. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the costume design was sort of already in place even one of my first meetings, there was sort of a mock-up drawing of me in the costume already, you know, um, they'd already designed the sort of the brown color palette and the browns and oranges of the TVA, that sort of 50s modern style. Um, but we had a lot of fittings with, with the suit because, you know, wanting it to feel high status, wanting her to feel like in this tailored, well-fitted suit that sort of also has some movement to it as we get into the fight you know with a sort of more of a frock coat kind of um tail coat to it so so that was kind of fun and i think you know when i put on the jacket it makes me sort of stand up straight and you know much more aware of my posture i think you know than i would be and and you know the suit and tie kind of um vibe kind of gives you that sort of you know formal um sort of power energy that that she has could you talk a bit more to the physical side of her and the fighting side, what sort of fighting style she has, gives a bit more idea of that. 
Well, you'll have to watch to find out exactly. But I mean, we talked about with our amazing stunt team, the idea that uh, Renslayer came up um, as a hunter originally. So she had a military background. She had fight training in her muscle memory. Uh, but now that she's, you know, a, a sort of top judge at the TVA, she doesn't very often have to use her fighting skills because there are other people to do that <laughs> for her. But when she does, it really means something. And she she is not scrappy. You know, she is very um, sort of elegant and, and, and sort of minimal in her fighting style because she's very skilled. So we were trying to find a way to, to make her movement seem, you know, um, not just sort of pared down and and slick um as opposed to anything too sort of um as i say scrappy so so that was kind of interesting and how that you know plays into the costume and and the rest of her physicality uh you can't have missed the release of the previous two marvel tv shows wonder vision and falcon and the winter soldier they've been massive does that change your perception going into the release of loki knowing that these shows can go massive and does it sort of make it a little more nerve wracking waiting for the audiences to see this? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I try not to pay too much attention because there's only so much you can control as an actor, you know, <laughs> sort of have to kind of go, I've done my bit now sort of over to the rest of the world, you know, to enjoy it. So um, I'm really happy that the other shows have, have been so successful and I think it's great for Disney Plus and I think it's really great that people are so excited to see Loki. But in terms of worrying or trying to control the outcome, I think that's sort of, you know, not the best use of my energy. No, fair enough. Um, final question, quite quick, so I'm running out of time. Uh, talking to Owen, he described the show as really being about free will. What's your interpretation of what the meaning of the, of the series is? Yeah, that's really interesting. That's definitely one of the themes that we explore. I think, you know, the idea of destiny versus free will, you know, the idea, can anybody ever change? Are we essentially our fundamental nature? Is, is that who we are? for all time, always, or, um, you know, can anybody be, you know, can anybody change? Can a villain, you know, change their spots kind of thing? Or can somebody is, you know, are we all, all good or all bad? You know, that gray area of, of, you know, flawed human beings. So, um, so I think those are all really interesting themes that, that are there, you know, under the surface of the show. I look forward to playing it playing out over the next few weeks. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day.